Eli, regardless of the bad luck he sustained at round 15 at Denver, he sure put on a clinic on how to ride a motorcycle. This is over the finish line. Make sure you pay attention to his rear brake foot and watch how seamlessly he transitions from being on his toes to using that rear brake as a foot peg in one fluid motion. That is the key to these professionals. They don't make things into three steps, sit down, move feet, stick leg out. It's all happens in just one step. Notice how he sticks out his leg and lands on that rear brake. He is using it as a foot peg, but he's also slowing down. And now he can seamlessly transition to a 180 degree corner and get on the gas faster as opposed to taking multiple steps to do it. Quick transition, hard on the brake. Almost all the riders are. Look at Levi Kitchen. This is more pronounced. His foot is completely off the foot pegs, and he's not even going to touch that foot peg. He's just going to transition straight to that rear brake and land on it. Magnificent. Freaking magnificent. So this is through the whoop section if we're just backing up just a bit for the wall jump. This track was incredibly blue groove. You lose horsepower. Every 1,000 feet, you lose about 3% horsepower. So in Denver, it's 6,000-ish feet. So you're looking at 15 to 17% difference. And I believe that these guys actually detune these motors. Yes, ironically, you lose horsepower, but you're going, why should I detune the motor? Well, it's because of the conditions the track conditions being blue groove. All this stuff is incredibly slippery. Pay close attention to the body language of Sexton and Tomac as they go around this 180 degree corner. They have to have incredible throttle control and they also have to weight that outside peg and lean to their inside to let that ascent do its thing as far as slip out, but make sure that they don't go down as well. They have to stay on top of the motorcycle. So watch Eli. We'll watch him in slow-mo. He's stand up a little bit in the rut, but watch that ass end as it slips. Barely slips. Barely slips there. And notice how far over he is. He is pushing that motorcycle in the direction it is slipping, but he is staying straight. And now watch Sexton behind him. That ass end slips out too, but notice his body, his ass is on the inside and he is standing straight too. And we actually have some sparks from Eli Tomac off that wall with him scrubbing. That's pretty impressive in itself. And just because I believe that this doesn't get enough attention by just how impressive these guys are along with the mechanics for making these motorcycles proficient in these conditions because you heard me talk about detuning the motorcycle what you're doing is you're causing the spark plug to fire just a little bit later so that you don't have as much power and why would you want to do that well you don't want a strong rod to be able to have that thing go all over and tomac literally has to adjust his riding technique as far as just dropping the clutch in certain things because in a corner like this what would Tomac usually do? Just dump the clutch and haul ass. But watch what he does here. He actually lets off the gas to prevent that ass end from slipping out. I need to show it in real time so that you can actually tell because slow motion does not do it justice. He is letting off to prevent that rear end from completely losing control. It's very subtle, yet... Very effective. Third time's the charm, guys. I promise. I want you to pay attention to Sexton because his ascent does slip out here, but he stands up and he keeps his body positioning lean to the inside by keeping the himself straight because however you are, that motorcycle is going to follow. Just like where you look, that motorcycle is going to follow. But notice how he's on the inside and watch him stand up. And as that ascent slips... He is lean to the inside. He is counteracting what the motorcycle is doing underneath him. And again, that's what makes these riders the 1% of the 1% is they can do this in a millisecond, make adjustments. We live in a world of instant gratification, and that's why I suggest you shop puremoto.com for all your part, accessory, and products. It's easy. You can search over 1.3 million items in stock and over 203 local retailers. You just 
search what you want to buy. In this case, I need some new boots. I love Garnet SG12s. Find out what size I want, what color. I can either buy it locally or I can do online delivery if I don't want to leave the house. I just want to head straight to the track. But if I'm feeling antsy, I could just find the nearest shop that has them and I can tell them to place it on hold and I can head that way. Make sure you shop puremoto.com. In the latter half of this video, I want to talk about the 250 class because they are the ones that are the most susceptible to the loss of power because they're just smaller motorcycles. They don't make as much power. And I believe Max Volan has really been coming into his own. He's one of those riders that he's taken a while to worm up to how Supercross is. And I believe he does deserve to be on a factory team. And he's going to continue to progress as long as he keeps making the commitment to bettering himself. And this is one of the the deals that impressed me. After the first corner, this section of this last quad into the corner, when you're down on power in these little bikes, you have to have even greater commitment than what you normally would. And Max sends it. Sends the quad where a lot of the riders were stepping on, stepping off. And so you just have to point this out that these 250s are at a loss of power, and yet Max Volan was still sending it. And here's probably the most impressive 250 line of the night for me was Carson Mumford, who is a rider that should have a factory ride continuously. There is so much talent in the sport of motocross and supercross. There's just not enough rides, which is unfortunate because you, you, you know my opinions when it comes to riders being injured and having backup people that are on benches. But I digress. Watch Carson as he's on the inside of Lopes here. And normally these riders, because the 250s have less horsepower and there's a drawdown because of altitude, the bikes are suffocated. So they're much slower when it comes to oxygen. A lot of them would roll and then jump over as opposed to going outside, step on, step off. But watch how fast Carson gets on the gas here. He lands and instantly, you can tell by the roost, just hauls ass to get on top of that. A lot of the 450s were doing it no problem, but that's the difference between a 450 and a 250. And then the next thing is there is no lip on these stepovers. And watch the body language of Carson, how hard he has to compress his legs and lift straight up to get that lift. Look at how he is trying to turn that motorcycle into a chopper by squishing that ass end down to get it to preload to jump off because this is a tall lip. Look at the flaggers and the track crew. You're looking at a, a jump that is five feet tall that you have to get over and he gets over it beautifully. He gets it over it better than Lopes does behind him. And he all did this from the inside and partially because he was on the gas and he was preloading the heck out of that Kawasaki. While we are on the topic of the step on step off, if you notice Lopes actually cased that step off pretty hard and the suspension soaked it up. This is just a little bit more blown up and pronounced that I'd like to analyze it. Look at Kitchen as he goes wide and he's got a bounce off, right? He's not preloading very much. He's just hauling ass, just giving it gas off. But watch how he gets his front wheel over and his rear wheel cases it really hard, right? And look at how that bike soaks that up. That is not a small jump. Again, a typical motorcycle that didn't have high dollar suspension on it, you would be on a trip to the Endo City, if that is even a city, I'd have to look it up. And it would be bad. Absolutely. It would be terrifying. But these motorcycles soak it up so well that you can even hit another obstacle right after it and have it be no freaking problem. Everybody wants to know why the Lawrence brothers are so fast. Not only is it because they're from Australia and everybody down under knows how to keep it WFO, but I digress. <laughs> A lot of it has to do with just the technique and sheer just gajones. Watch Jet as he comes over what should have been a triple, but it was a double in Denver right before the whoop section. Notice he shifts, 
Here's the first shift. Second shift. Boom. Which is probably fourth gear into the whoops. That is spectacular. He is shifting twice before he runs into the whoops. A lot of riders only shift once over this double. But we see boom. There. Boom. And the amount of precision that has to happen from Jet is... It, it's it's unfathomable because when those motorcycles are not under load, it's that much easier to miss a shift. And if he was to miss a shift, he would land, there'd be engine braking, he would have a crossbar to the chest, might knock the wind out of him, might make him fall down and crash. It would be bad. It would be bad news bears if that was to happen. I, I do have to speculate that Factory Honda probably has the best tumbling available when it comes to coating these gears to make sure that they are just like slice bread and butter so that you can just did, 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 did. it's almost like you don't even have to shift the motorcycle it's so seamless however you still have to be able to have the cojones to shift into fourth gear and just pin it through the whoops